Hey guys, I um, am here to do a very, no, can't say quick, because <laughs> it's never quick, under 20 minute video. Um, I showed something on Facebook yesterday that I had been doing to kill some time, because I was feeling bored yesterday, and I can't believe I said that with this room of all this stuff, but I took out some of the little boxes that I've been saving to make book covers with. I had made painting papers early in the week. I was trying to work on a technique that I'd seen on the uh, Jelly Arts. Uh oh, I want to give credit to the wrong place. Anyway, to the uh, to jelly printing and it didn't work well for me. So I went on and just started doing acrylic paints. But I took took the painting paper that I made and I covered some of the little uh, cardboard boxes I've been saving for books. And somebody said, oh, did you do a video? I'm like, no, I didn't even think about it. That was just entertaining myself. <laughs> so here's the front and the back of that one. And I have, this is one, uh, this, these are all on uh, eight and a half by 11 pieces of uh, white computer paper. They're made, there's one that's on a magazine, but I haven't made a box yet out of that. But I mean, a, a book. So there's the leftover piece of paper from this one. And if you look at my desk, there's various pieces of paper left over from them. Um, there's that one. Oh, there's another piece of paper. And then I did this one where I did the jelly print and I crinkled up the paper and then ran the distress print, the distress ink over it and then stamped it. And I'm not really crazy about this one, but it's okay. It's not, you know, and then... Oops. And then I, I um, coated everything with uh, heavy, is this heavy? Extra heavy gel medium. I think I need to buy different, uh, I want to say weights or different thicknesses or whatever of the golden gel. I really like this, so me, gel medium. But there's the leftover piece from that one. Where did I put the other one I just showed you? That one's there. And this is, I think this might have been the first or second one I did. I did the jelly print. And then there's the inside of the book. I don't put stuff in them. I just cover the outsides. <laughs> I leave other creative people to do that part. So it's not always my thing. Then I tried this one. But I didn't, I crumpled up the paper, but not quite as much as I did the other one. And I did not stamp anything on it. This is all just done with colors, kind of smooshing stuff around. And I don't know. Uh, I think this, uh, again, is on white computer paper. And I did this one, which is also white computer paper. But I can see I have a little tiny bit of cracking on the ends where it folds. So I may have to figure out a fix for that. may have to put myself some kind of a... Um, duct tape or something on there. I don't like the way it looks. And I don't know if I really want to cover it up with ink or whatever. I haven't decided yet. Anyway, so that's the front. Here's the inside. And it all took one sheet of paper and I should have. Yep, I do. There's a leftover piece. And this one. This was a smaller box. This was a, oh, what was this? A sinus medication box that I cut down to a smaller size. There's the inside and the outside, just, you know. And then, since it's a smaller size box, I had a larger piece of scrap paper left over from it. And then I did this one last night, which was a learning experience, because I did something that I thought was gonna work, and then after I put it together, I didn't like it. So I haven't done anything to the inside of it yet. But what I was trying to do was to add a nondescript color or texture to the paper by using the UT, um, where is it? Using my Martha Stewart's embossing stamp pad and then using the ultra thick embossing powder. And when I did it and went to fold it over the edges, because I just did an eight and a half by 11 piece of typing paper or computer paper. And then when I did it around the corners, the UT came undone over the embossing that had, was, you know, on both sides and it was sticking up and it looks bumpy and unsightly. 
I don't like it. I think what I should have done, because I've never done that before, so I think uh, next time I do it and I want to use UT, I will do it on flat surfaces, not surfaces where I'm going to fold them over. I don't want to put washi tape on it. I don't want to do anything to it, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the inside. I don't know. I have extra paper for it somewhere, but I don't know where it is. I thought it was up here on the desk. There's so much up here on the desk. I have no idea where it is. Anyway, so there's this one, and it's not finished yet. I did... Let's see, where is it? I did... Uh, I cut a box. Oh, here it is. Here's the piece of paper that's left over from that one. You can see the UT if I... If I let the light hit it right. You can see how it's the clear. I didn't put any color on it, just did it clear so that it would kind of mimic the color that was underneath it. And there's a big, huge piece of paper left, and I'm debating whether or not to waste the, uh, put the paper in here because I know as soon as I put it on a place that opens and closes, that it's going to crack again and look ugly. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this one. So I've set this aside to work on it later. This one was from. Which box? Was it this one? No. I cut a box in half. Or cut some off of a box. On that one either. I don't know what I did with it. Son of a gun. Anyway, so I took leftover paper and just glued that flat in there. And I did a, an uh, eight and a half by, I think this is 14 inch paper. And I did both sides of the jelly when I did it. But I was going to put this dark green on the outside. because so I think it, it will complement, because I'm going to have to fold it over what I did here. I think it's going to complement the green on the um, inside. So I'm going to cover this like the, oh, the M&M box was too tall. So I just cut a couple inches off the box, and this was the little piece that was left over, and I thought, well, I can't waste that. It's like an instant book, you know. You don't waste that stuff. So this is waste paper from another book, and so I'm going to cover this. So I will probably put you on fast forward to cover this, and then I'll come back and I'll do a larger book later. All right, here we go with the fast forward. See you on the other side.
Okay, so this is the last part of the video where I showed how I made the little book. And now I'm going to show you the inside after I glued stuff on the inside. Let me, let me make you go in a little closer. There it is, the front, where I did the embossing and then the UT. And then I found a piece of um, the word art in my little miniature word book, word container. Right, so inside the front cover, I, I cut these words out that were art inspired. Maybe you need to go in a little closer. Eep. There we go. This is all painty paper, scrapped, scrap painty paper, and just random words. Now, Cindy Utter's book was painted words. Mine is going to be scrap painty paper words. How's that? <laughs> but Seeing her book inspired me to do this one. I didn't want to drag out paint and make a big old mess because I'm very messy. So I did it with paper that I had already done. And if you look at the, well, no, nope, this isn't the one. Uh, this one. If you see this book right here, that's where this paper came from. It was left over from this project here. Never let it be said, I don't use my old painty papers. My scrappy things. Some of it's book text you know, for the background. Some of it's just painty paper and some of it is tea dyed, coffee dyed? Coffee dyed paper. A lot of it's color related. I have an art family. I love my art family. This says a beautiful flower and a grumpy weed live here. I think I'm the grumpy weed and my husband's the beautiful flower. <laughs> this paper right here, here and then the little piece right here are on deli paper. This is a jelly print and this is the coffee dyed paper in the background there. And so now, since I was going to use the word colors, I tried to put as many colors as I could on this page. And the same thing for this one. I wanted it to, to be colorful since that was the word. Me. Laughter is life sunshine. I should have put yellow in here, but I didn't think about it. For the sunshine. I like the blues in this one. I'm not a fan of blue, but once in a while, I, I find that I, I really do like it. This says discover power. Oops, sorry. Think before you speak. I had that incident the other day where I spoke before I thought about what I was saying. And then I had to make an apology. Which is not hard for me when I'm wrong. Like I said, all this is leftover painty paper, like little teeny scraps in the bottom of my painted paper drawer. Green is my favorite color. And some of the paper I've used on more than one page because there was enough of it I could and I was trying to use it up. Breathe, just be you. Wise words. This is alcohol ink paper that I did. Uh, I watched one of Cat Hands, uh, I don't know which one it was, but the ones that they did on the, the shiny paper a long time ago. And this is one of the pieces off it was left over. And I like the color orange. I don't have a lot of orange painty paper. I don't own a lot of orange paint, but I do like the color orange. Just don't have a lot of it. Loving kisses. Mwing, mwing, mwing. Fuck and joy, and that says smile. 
and you can't read this one. Uh, I can't read it. The Power to Delight. This started out with, this side started out with this kind of paper here, but this has yellow, kind of a yellow hue to it. So I was trying to fill it in to accentuate it, and then I just got carried away. <laughs> and after I saw how, what this one looked like, I said, eh, not going to do the other side that way. Probably should so they'd match, but after I put the yellow in here, wasn't really thrilled with it. I'm not going to change it, but I learned my lesson about <clears throat> how to judiciously use yellow. Enjoy the journey, gallery. Original magic. And that's it. Um, I did not like, I, I sewed or poked holes in the spine. Oh, sorry. I poked holes in the spine before I got the stuff really sewn in. And I didn't like the way they were uneven. And when I sewed these in, I decided that I didn't want this to show how bad a job I did before I actually sewed them in. So there's like millions of holes in it. So I just took a piece of um, chipboard or, you know, whatever this is made out of, an M&M &M box, and covered it up with a scrap piece of this green paper, this painted paper, and wrapped it around the scrap piece here and then glued it on top of the spine so you wouldn't see the terrible marks I left in the spine trying to decide where to place all these little um, signatures. The one thing I like about or that I try to do with my signatures or my the spine on the inside spine, I always try to cover it so you don't see the bare chipboard. I like for it to have a finished look to it. That's why in these I cover the inside even though a lot of people don't. I think it gives it a more professional finished look if you cover the inside. I don't usually leave the little strip here like this, but I went ahead and left, left it because you're going to see lots of signatures in here and you're really not going to see that part. But you can see like little places in between the signatures and I don't want it to be my pen drawings and lines where I mismarked and that kind of thing. I wanted it to look nice. So that's why I always do mine that way. Okay, so this is my project all done. My little flip through of my little art inspired book from Cindy Utter's, I think it, the name of the video is Painted Words. I'll link it down below in the description box so you can see what I'm talking about. So there's my inspiration. I told Cindy thank you very much for getting me out of the bead coma that I've been in the last month because I've been making a lot of beads and I think I, I don't know, I just kept making them because I was in a bead coma. Just kept going and going and then I saw her video and I was like, oh, I need to do something different. And I put my bead stuff away for a couple days. Yay! All right, so that's it. See you guys later. Bye.